Hello, wonderful people! Here we are, section 13.2. We're in the chapter 13, Universal Gravitation. And now we're going to talk about section 2. What is the gravitational field inside a planet? So, if you could dig a hole and go down, and you dug your hole all the way to the center of the Earth, would you feel, what kind of gravity would you feel? So that's the question. The gravitational field of Earth at its center is, what do you think? Oops, why isn't this clicking? There we go, zero. So in the center of the Earth, there is no gravity. Think of it. I'm just going to say this. We're going to cover this in the whole chapter, but I'll just say this bit right here, right now. Which way is down? Because if your feet are pointing towards the North Pole, well, there's a bunch of ground under you, but it's the same amount of ground between you and the North Pole as between you and the South Pole, because you're in the center. So the radius is the same all the way around, or the depth is the same. So if you can see that in your mind's eye, you're smarter than I am. For those of us that need a little bit more help, hang on. Here comes the rest of the lecture. The gravitational field of Earth exists inside Earth as well as outside. Imagine a hole drilled completely through the Earth. Consider the kind of motion you would undergo if you fell into such a hole. So first thing we have to do is drill a hole. So there's the hole, and we're starting at the North Pole. The second thing we have to do <clears throat> is take out all the air. So there's no air in this hole in this hole. If you want to pretend there's no air on Earth at all, that's fine. It doesn't matter to me. There's no air. So <clears throat> as you can imagine, if I were to dig a hole out there in my yard and I jump down into it, I'm going to fall down into the hole. <laughs> hole, sorry. And my rate of acceleration will be good old fashioned G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So as I start falling down, though, you will find, if you did this, you would find that your acceleration diminishes. Your acceleration gets smaller. Why? Because the pull of the mass above you partly cancels out the pull below. So if you're here, you've got all this Earth pulling you down, but you've got all this Earth up here pulling you up. So you see how this Earth above you cancels out some of the Earth down here pulling you down? So as you go down, your acceleration, which is normally 9.8, we abbreviate with G, goes down. So then it will be half of G. And then in the very center of the Earth, your acceleration will be zero. I'm getting ahead of myself, right? Well, that's what this explains. So I'll just read it. Starting at the North Pole end, you'd fall and gain speed all the way down to the center. And then overshoot and lose speed all the way to the South Pole. You gain speed moving towards the center and lose speed moving away from the center. Without air drag, the trip would take nearly 80, 45 minutes, which is wrong. It's, it takes 42 minutes, almost exactly. And I can do the math and prove it to you. It's just long and ugly. Without air drag, of course. All this is assuming no air. At the beginning of the, so let's just talk about what, let's just, what, what was said here. Look at the picture. So you gain speed all the way down. So you start off here. Your acceleration is 9.8, and then it goes down to zero. So all this time, you're getting faster, faster, faster. Now here, you're at your maximum speed, and you have no acceleration. But now as you come down through this way, oops, come down this way, your acceleration is now pulling you back towards the center. So you're slowing down and you lose speed all the way to the South Pole. So you lose speed all the way at the South Pole. And if you did this just right, you would pop out of the South Pole, out of the hole, you'd pop up to exactly the height you were standing at up here. And then you could do one of two things. You could reach your foot over and step out onto the ground, probably a leg on each side so you don't fall back into the hole. Or you could just keep your legs together, you'd pop out of the ground, you'd have a half a second to say a quick hello, and then you'd fall back down. And then you'd fall down, and it would come through. And if you popped out this side, 
it would take you 84 minutes to go all the way down, back, and all the way up. 84 minutes. So if you brought along a laptop, you could watch a watch a movie. <clears throat> so, oh, and this was 42 minutes. I definitely have to fix that number if you just went one way, North Pole to South Pole. So that's just about as fast as you could get from the North Pole to the South Pole. 42 minutes right there. Drill a hole, take out the air, jump in. Um, <clears throat> that's what that's what we covered already. I read that part. <clears throat> we were in the right place. All right. So let's talk about an explanation. So right here, the person is about halfway down. So your acceleration is going to be about half of G. So let me show you a picture I tried to draw. This is the person. Oh, I forgot to draw the hole. Sorry. Actually, oh, no, I didn't want the hole. So if this was the person standing on the sphere, so if instead of falling, if he was just standing on the ground there, then there is a sphere underneath him. There's the inner sphere that he's standing on. And then outside of the sphere that he's standing on is the shell. So this is all the earth that's above where he's standing. And yeah, I didn't draw this to scale or else the person would be a, a tiny, tiny, tiny dot. So here's my point. If this person's standing on the inner sphere, the outer shell has no gravity pulling on him. So it's like that all goes away. So the gravity that's left, oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. I uh, wish I could go back on this recorder, but I can't. So I just want to take the inner sphere, pull it out, and then there's the outer shell that's left. So over here is the outer shell, and here is the inner sphere. And you can see the blank space where it's left. And I drew the person in on both sides. So in this picture, he's standing on, on the surface of the inner sphere. In this picture, he's floating around inside the outer shell because he has nothing to stand on in the outer shell. Are you with me there? Good. So what does, what's next? The button didn't hit the wrong button. So I want to talk about what it would be like to be standing inside the outer shell. So rather than talk about all this solid earth, what if I just divided this all this earth out here in the shell and uh, and stop thinking about it in three dimensional, just think about it in two dimensions. And I divided this up into six balls. Sorry, eight balls. So there's ball one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is exactly how Isaac Newton himself figured this out. He imagined that there are eight balls all around. And if he's sitting in the middle, there's the radius for how far it is to the, this ball. So the radius from here to here is r. We don't care what the number is. We're just going to pick R for the number. But the point is, is it's that same distance to each one of these balls. So now we can say that if this ball is exerting gravity on the person here, standing, on, standing there, then this ball also has a gravity on this person. And the gravity from this ball and the gravity of this ball are equal and opposite. So they cancel each other out. So if you're standing on that, in that little black space, you don't feel the gravity of here or here. Similarly, if you go around, you don't feel the gravity because those two balls, that ball and that ball, cancel out in that space. And this ball and this ball cancel out. And this ball and this ball cancel out. So the first thing he realized is that if you're in the middle of this sphere and you've got all these spheres around you, you don't feel any gravity. Now, that makes sense if you are in, where's the picture where you're in the middle of the Earth? If you are standing right there in the center, now you can understand how you feel no gravity from this outer shell. But this person is not in the center. This person is standing up there, kind of you know, close to the edge. So does that person up here feel any gravity? The answer is no. Because if you get closer to this edge, you know what? I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. I'm going to skip ahead. Oh, there's the picture of the person in the middle. This is what you need to know for the test. This phrase right here, that's why I put it in red. So if we were in class, I would tell you to write this down because you must have this in your notes and you must understand this. 
and here's what it says. In a cavity at the center of the Earth, your weight would be zero because you would be pulled equally by gravity in all directions. That is what you have to understand. You have to have that in your head, okay? So there's the person, there's the little cavity that he's carved out in the middle, and you can see that there's a bunch of Earth here, and that's opposite of this Earth. And so you're pulled this way by that Earth and this way by this Earth, and they cancel each other out. So you're canceled that, it cancels out all the way around. That's what you need to understand. I have this picture to explain something a little more complicated. If you don't understand this and this and this, that's okay. You must understand this. So somewhere between this sentence and this explanation that I've already given here and the, the explanation that I'm going to give here, you have to come to this, okay? Because now, like I said, if you're in the very center, you get all this cancels out. But now if you move off center, if you're over here, what happens? Well, if you're over here, you can see you're close to these two balls. So these are going to pull on you really hard because you're close to them. But over here, you're far away from these four balls. But these four balls are all pulling on you. So the question is, do these two balls that are close pull stronger, weaker, or the same? as these four balls that are more balls, but further away? And the answer is the same. No matter where you go in here, if you're real close to this one, then these, all those are pulling you away from this one with the exact same strength as this one is pulling you towards it. That's the way it works. Now, it, to go one step further, if you are close to this side, and instead of eight balls around, we're imagining a solid shell, this part of the shell you are very close to, and this has a lot of pull, but there's very little mass. You take that and you, you, you go through the center of your mass, and now this mass is on the opposite side. There's more mass here, but there's more distance. Oops, hit the wrong button. More distance, less distance, but more, I'm sorry, less distance, less mass, more distance, more mass. And it works out so that they exactly cancel each other out. If you can see this in your head, great. If you can see that in your head, great. If, all, if, if this works for you, you just imagine that you're standing on a shell and whatever is above you goes away. That's fine too. The end result is you have to get to here. In a cavity at the center of Earth, your weight would be zero because you would be pulled equally by gravity in all directions. Uh, yeah, okay, just wanted to. Now, again, for those of you who enjoy math, this is, this shows you the graph of gravity. So this axis is the strength of gravity. This axis, this axis, is your distance. Right here you are standing on the surface of the earth at the radius 1r and then you start digging a tunnel to go down into the center of the earth and then this is when you start to fly away from the surface of the earth. As you fly away from the earth your gravity goes down by your distance, the strength of gravity goes down by distance squared. It never goes to zero because even a huge huge distance 1 over a really big number squared gives you a tiny number, but it's still a measurable force. It's not zero. Then once you start digging a hole, it doesn't follow this parabola looking thing. It's just a straight line. Oops, I'm hitting that button. And then when you're at the center of the earth, the gravity is zero. If you don't like this graph, throw it away. Don't worry about it. If this helps you figure things out, wonderful. I'm here to help. So if this is the test question, if you stepped in a hole, bored completely through the earth, and made no attempt to grab the edges at either end, and there's no air, what kind of motion would you experience? You would oscillate back and forth. Oh, don't worry about simple harmonic motion. It takes you 84 minutes to fall down, pop out at the South Pole, and then fall up and come back to where you were. Thank you very much.